Your next question. <clears throat> Mr. Banya, um, before lunch we were talking about your opinions in response to the testimony of Mr. Schnell. Did you also um, analyze the testimony of Ms. Arnold in this case? Yes, I did. And are you aware of her opinion that Ms. Hurd's career would have followed the same trajectory as that of Jason Momoa, Gal Gadot, Zendaya, Ana de Armas, and Chris Pine, if not for the Waldman statements? Yes. What's your understanding of Ms. Arnold's basis um, for her opinion that Ms. Hurd's career should have been similar to that of those identified actors? Um, Ms. Arnold uh, stated that when producers or her industry is looking to uh, hire uh, talent and actors that it's important to uh, best understand the, the public's perception of um, the actors that they're considering uh, and that it's important to you know, look into social media uh, to see what, what is happening with uh, the actors they're considering for either a movie or even a, uh, an endorsement opportunity with companies. Um, so th that was her approach. And is that the process she followed in providing her analysis of those purportedly comparable actors? No. She, although she stated that, she went in and uh, brought in these comparable, uh, alleged comparable actors and um, without really the reasoning behind that. Did you conduct an analysis based on your expertise in social media and internet analytics of Ms. Hurd compared to the actors to whom Ms. Arnold um, compares her? I did. And what did you find? Well, since uh, Ms. Arnold stated that the proper approach is looking at the public perspective, looking into social media, uh, and, and she did not do that, I felt that was the best approach to do this based on her, her words. So yes, I did go into uh, you know, best understanding the public perspective of um, Ms. Heard and the alleged comparable actors using Q scores. And then I also went and did some analysis on online and on social media as well. Can you briefly remind the jury what Q scores are? Yeah, again, Q scores uh, measure uh, how well a celebrity, it could be a, a cartoon character, it could be a sports person, how well they're known, how well they're liked, and how much they're disliked. And it's, it's an industry standard tool that's used. Uh, it's not just focused on the movies that they're in, but it's the, uh, focused on them as actors, uh, but also uh, what's happening in their personal lives uh, come to play as well. Uh, so that's how Q scores are typically used. Did you prepare a demonstrative that reflects the Q score analysis you completed? Yes, I did. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach again? All right. Thank you. No objection to the demonstrative. All right. We'll identify plaintiffs 1296 um, for identification and publish to the jury. Mr. Banya, what, what point in time do these Q scores represent that are reflected on your demonstrative? So this, uh, these are the winter 2019 Q scores um, that are reflected here. And what was important for me is uh, I wanted to find Q scores uh, that represented Miss Heard after Aquaman, and you know, remember Aquaman, December of 2018. These Q scores were gathered January and February of 19, but before the Waldman statements. And what did you find based on the Q scores? And you know, the higher the number, the better. Uh, as you can see, uh, you know, Miss Godot. Uh, has the highest Q score out of the out of, out of the group of uh, actors here uh, at a 28. Uh, but you're going to notice Miss Heard uh, has the lowest positive Q score. Uh, she has a nine. Uh, so I find that um, very interesting that uh, she doesn't appear to fit in as a comparable with these alleged comparable actors. Um, I think what's also interesting is the average Q score for all actors being scored at that time, which include 
uh, all the alleged comparable actors here score uh, at an average of 17. And you can see, again, she is nine well below that. And then on the right side, you're going to see the negative Q scores. So this is uh, how much people dislike you. Um, you know, so the lower the score is better. Uh, you can see Mr. Momoa is over here with the lowest at an 8. But you can see Ms. Hurd is over here at a 28, which is, was quite a difference. Uh, you know, a 20-point difference from Mr. Momoa, uh, and also a 10-point difference, uh, you know, from the average of all actors. So she is very, very much a little, uh, her positive score is very low, and her negative score is, is very high, uh, which tells me that she does not fit in as a comparable as it relates to these alleged comparable actors. Um, what opinions did you form based on that Q-score analysis? Uh, my opinions as it relates to these key scores is, um, you know, Miss um, Arnold used uh, these uh, actors as allegedly comparable actors. Um, but really, listening to her testimony yesterday, it appears that she's abandoned this approach. I don't think she's using these comparable actors or these alleged comparable actors anymore. She's more relying on her um, experience, and I agree with that. Did Ms. Arnold offer a criticism of your use of the Q-scores here? She did, yes. And what's your understanding of what that criticism is? Well, what I believe she was saying is that I should have ran Q-scores for these allegedly comparable actors after each of their breakout films, which um, I disagree. First of all, Q-scores doesn't work like that. Q-scores are available twice a year, so it's not that I could pick a month or a different month for each of, of, of the Q-score um, actors. Um, so I feel that, you know, what was important for me, and this doesn't always happen when, when I'm using Q-scores, you can get this per perfect moment in time. As Ms. Hurd said, I'm sorry, but as Ms. Arnold said, that, you know, Aquaman was Ms. Hurd's breakout moment. You know, so these scores reflect that, that breakout moment, uh, and, and, and they're terrible Q scores. How would your analysis change if you had used um, Ms. Arnold's logic with respect to the, the timing of the Q scores that you looked at? I mean, if you really think about what uh, Ms. Arnold was saying, is she's saying that she thinks Q scores are the highest for each actor right after their breakout moment. So I would think, if anything, uh, these Q-scores could have been a bit lower uh, because it's not right after their breakout moment. But what, again, what's important for me is the fact that these scores reflect you know, who Amber Heard was at the time before the Waldman statements, but after the Aquaman release. Um, we can take that one down, Tom. Thank you. What other work have you done um, in connection with forming your opinions in this case? Um, again, taking the advice from Ms. Arnold, it's important. Uh, she says the industry looks into social media, uh, what their followings are like, uh, you know, with the numbers as it relates to their followers. Um, you know, again, what is the public perception of them? So I, I analyzed uh, their social media accounts, um, but prior to the, the Waldman statement. So... And how, how did you do that? Yeah, so what I did, I don't know if you're all familiar with the archive.org. Uh, they have a tool called the Wayback Machine. What archive.org does is it, it archives the internet. So you can go back in time to see what websites and web pages used to look like uh, in the past. Uh, not all the time can you actually get a celebrity's social media accounts to have been archived, but uh, we were fortunate that each of the alleged comparable actors' social media accounts were in um, archive.org. So I was able to go back in time prior to the Waldman statements to see what, what the following activity was for each of the alleged comparable actors. Mr. Banya, did you prepare a demonstrative um, that def reflects your social media analysis? Yes. Your Honor, may I approach? Yes, ma'am. No objection to the demonstrative. All right, we'll mark it for identification purposes. Plaintiffs 1297 and publish.
I mean, could you tell the jury what you found when you looked at the social media? media? Yeah, so what I found, again, this is prior to the Waldman statements. You know, first thing you're going to notice here is not all actors use social media. You're going to see Mr. Pine uh, doesn't have Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and Momo and Darmus don't use Facebook or Twitter. Uh, but what's important to look at is um, you have misheard prior to the Waldman statements with 3.8 um, Instagram followers and 142,500 Twitter followers. And then you, you, you move down to uh, Gal Gadot uh, with 37 million Instagram followers compared to 3.8 million. Uh, and you know, the 2 million, 2.3 million uh, Twitter followers compared to Ms. Hurd's 142,000. And you can then even go down to Zendaya with 65 point, uh, million point nine and 17.2 million uh, Twitter followers. What this is telling me is really, you know, more people are interested in Ms. Godot and Zendaya and even uh, Mr. Momoa uh, than misheard on social media. It, it just tells me a lot of people are interested in these uh, actors, actors as opposed to misheard, more of a following. Q scores well liked, less disliked. So it kind of fits into the analysis of determining whether or not these alleged comparable actors are actually comparable. Based on your expertise, what are your overall opinions about uh, Ms. Arnold's analysis of the so-called comparable actors? Yes, again, you know, it appears that she's abandoned this approach, but and I agree with that. I, I feel that you know, through the Q score analysis and the uh, uh, social media analysis, that they're just not comparable. <clears throat> Tom, we can take that one down. Mr. Banya, based on um, all the analysis you did in this case, what what are your overall opinions? Yes, my overall opinions are that uh, Mr. Schnell failed to prove any causal connection with the Waldman statements and the uh, uh, search or the uh, hashtag activity, those spikes as it relates to Twitter. There, there, there's no causal connection there. Um, my second opinion is, you know, based on my uh, social media and Q-score analysis, um, Ms. Arnold's comparable, alleged comparable actors are not comparable. And then third, uh, Ms. Arnold and Mr. Schnell both failed to prove any causation as it relates to the Waldman statements causing economic harm to Ms. Heard. So, you know, as a damages expert, which um, uh, Ms. Arnold is, uh, you, you need to take into consideration causation before you can calculate damages. You look at damages and you look at this allegedly damaging event and not only do you have to prove that 100% of the damage is because of these Waldman statements, she didn't even consider uh, COVID. It happened at the same time. You know, a lot of actors probably made a lot less money because of COVID. Maybe films didn't get made. And, you know, when you do, do an analysis of, of damages, you prove causation, but you also have to look at everything else that might have caused this alleged economic harm. And she didn't look into any of that. She didn't even know what causation was. So I don't think of damages is the, an appropriate approach in this case. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Cross-examination.